the tenth anniversary. Ticket, please, sir. There you are, George. You. I didn't think you'd be coming by. <laughs> it's the tenth anniversary, George. You wouldn't expect me to miss the tenth anniversary, now, would you? It might have been better if you had, Inspector Ridley. It really might have been better if you had. The tenth anniversary by R. D. Wingfield with Peter Pratt as Detective Inspector Sadler. The tenth anniversary. He's been in there an hour now, Sergeant. Yes, sir. What's it all about, do you think? No, I really couldn't say, sir. Uh, would you mind, sir? Eh? You're leaning on the blue file. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, thank you, sir. Straight back from his holidays and in with the old man. Something big, Sergeant. You mark my words. Oh! Uh, and here he is, making his usual spectacular entrance. You all right, sir? You left that damn drawer stuck out again, Green? Uh, same knee as last time, sir. Yes. Sorry, sir. I told you once, I've told you a hundred times. Hello, old boy. And I was out of here, Inspector Sadler, this morning. And Lee, you're sitting in my chair. Oh, just keeping it warm for your mat. <coughs> How was the holiday? <sighs> a disaster. Oh. I don't want to talk about it. The map of southwest England, Sergeant Green. Yes, sir. Decent weather. If you like rain, it didn't stop. Get away. We had a heat wave here. Too hard to work. Still is, by the look of it. Come on, Sergeant. You are, sir. Don't let us keep you, Henley. The old man have much to say. He was gushing. This map's useless. What are you looking for? It's no good. It didn't mark. A place called Monk's did. Ah, there. Just south of Bristol. Oh. You need a magnifying glass to see it. Why can't we spend some money on some decent maps? Out of the way, old, isn't it? What do you know about it? Uh, that it was the scene of the famous Monkstead Honeymoon Cottage murders. Someone stabbed the husband and blew the wife's head off with a shotgun. Unsolved to this day. We're going to put that right. The old man's just dumped the file on my lap. Eh? Nip home and get a case back, Sergeant Green. We're catching the 1417 from Paddington this afternoon. Oh, yes. What's the hurry? The murders took place years ago. Anyhow, how come you've got it? It's Ridley's case. Doesn't he go down there every year and poke around? That's right. On the anniversary of the murders. He had his picture in the Sunday papers once, kneeling by the grave with a frown on his face. Determined detective will not give in. <laughs> or oh, some such rubbish. I suppose he hopes if he keeps turning up, something may happen. It's taking its time working, if that's the idea. Has Inspector Ridley been taken off the case, then, sir? Mm, I expect you've got a lot of work to do, Henley, after the heat wave. Ah, look, old man, what I hear, I keep to myself. You know that. Ah. Well, you'd better keep it to yourself. The old man doesn't want anything to leak out until we're absolutely sure. Inspector Ridley's missing. What's that, sir? What? Last week was the 10th anniversary of the murders. He went down to Monkstead as usual, but he never came back. Good Lord. We've got witnesses who saw him boarding the London train at Monkstead Station on Friday evening. His sergeant met the train at Paddington. Ridley wasn't on it. He hasn't been seen since. An accident. Perhaps he fell from the carriage. With his luggage? Hardly likely. And anyway, someone would have found him by now. We've yes. had search parties out all along the line. There's no trace, nothing. No one suggested foul play on it, sir. He found his sergeant Friday morning, said he'd uncovered some new evidence which would wrap up the case. The old man thinks that someone may not have wanted it wrapped up. Hmm. Mind you, speaking purely personally, I never really liked the man. Neither did I, sir. That... Business with a woman PC at Y Division, with Inspector Ridley. What is he really? I'll tell you another thing. It wasn't coincidence that Ridley and the super's wife didn't turn up at the annual dinner and dance. No, I'd heard about that. You too. two are like a pair of old women. And I don't care what sort of a man he was, all I've got to do is find him. Dead or alive.
Inspector Sadler. That's right. Police Constable Hart, sir. I was told to meet you. Good. Take my case, would you? My fat friend is Detective Sergeant Green. Signed? Afternoon. Tickets, please, gentlemen. Oh, uh, you got them, Green. Oh, Porter, were you on duty last Friday evening? That's right, sir. My name's Sadler. Detective Inspector Sadler. Uh, if I had my other suit on, I could show you my warrant card. Do you remember a bloke catching the London train on Friday? A bit taller than me, dark hair, an old friend moustache. <laughs> Inspector Ridley. You know him? Honours us with a visit every year. Yes, I saw him. Caught the 729. I've already told Constable R. Now you're telling me. Do you have any luggage? Luggage? But you told me he had a suitcase, George. Just carry my case, Constable. I can ask my own questions. He had a blue suitcase. He wasn't on the train when it reached Paddington. It's not a non-stop, sir. Plenty of other places he could have got off. Anyone else see him get on the train? If my word's not good enough, ask Bert, the taxi driver. He drove him down. Bert's waiting outside, sir. Going to take us to your hotel. Uh, what's this rustic doss house like? Uh, the Queen's Hotel? Very comfortable. It's what you asked for, sir. It's the one Inspector Ridley Hall was using. I've uh, put you and the inspector at this table, Sergeant Green. You've got a lovely view through that window. Yes, lovely. Uh, sleep well? Yeah, like a top. <laughs> hey, it's our country air, sir. Ah, here's your inspector. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir, me. I really must apologize, uh, Inspector. I, I, I don't know how it could have happened. Uh, what could have happened? Damn bed collapsed in the middle of the night. I wasn't aware I'd said anything funny, Sergeant. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You ordered? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Do you mind if I see the menu? You can have it back. Ah, Gibbers. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. Hmm? I'm afraid they've all gone. Uh, we start breakfast at seven, you see. Oh, anything then, anything. Uh, I'll see what I can do, sir. Why leave them on the menu if they're off? Come to think of it, sir, I I did hear a bit of a bang round two o'clock this morning. Would that have been you falling out of bed? There are safer subjects of conversation, Sergeant. Oh. Well, uh, what's our program for today, then, sir? The fact-finding mission. What did Ridley do when he was down here? Where did he go? Who did he speak to? And we're not taking anything on trust. We check and double-check. How did you sleep last night? Perfectly, thank you, sir. Nice room... Comfortable bed? Good. Tonight we'll swap. Mine's diabolical. Oh, grit your teeth. Here comes breakfast. Here we are, then, gentlemen. Bacon and egg for the sergeant. Ah, that looks very nice. Thank you. Oh, don't wait for me. Pardon, sir? Nothing. That was the last of the bacon, I'm afraid, Inspector. Well, we have left it till a quarter to eight. <clears throat> uh, scrambled eggs, all right? Well, is that what he's supposed to be? Sit down. Uh, sir? Sit down. I want to ask you some questions. What's your name? Manning. John Manning. You own this place? Yes. Many staff? Oh, a couple of maids and a cook. I do most things myself. Mm, nice of you not to let other people take the blame. You knew Inspector Ridley, did you? Oh, indeed, yes. He's been staying here every year for the past ten years. When did he arrive this year? I'd, um, have to get my book. Yeah, sure, go ahead. <coughs> Hmm. Swap you my scrambled egg for that last bit of bacon, Sergeant. I don't like scrambled eggs, sir. Mm. I see. Well, stay a sergeant all your life. Hmm. What do you think of Manning? Well, I haven't really paid him much attention, sir. You wouldn't with your nose stuck in your breakfast. Observe mm -hmm. people, Sergeant. Listen to what they say and watch them while they say it. Manning's worried about something. Oh, look out. Here we are, then, Inspector. Uh, yes, now he... Yes, he arrived on the 17th. The 17th, the date of the honeymoon cottage murders. Yes. The same date he arrived every year for the past ten years. Yes. And you had to check it in your book. What room did you give him? Uh, oh, uh, number 12. Number 12? Where's that? It's in the attic next to the bathroom. It's not one of our <laughs> best rooms. Neither is mine. Why do you stick him up there? Well, he asked for that room. He, he always had it. Oh, so he booked in advance? Yes. Let's have a look at his booking, then. This letter signed Robinson? Yeah, I, yes, I know, but it is Inspector Ridley's booking. Why did he sign himself Robinson? You'd better ask him that. You know why we're here, don't you? You know he never arrived back in London. Yes. 
Yes, I had heard. Pass the marmalade, please, sir. You don't feel I'm leaving you out of the conversation, Sergeant? No, sir. Oh, that's all right, then. If my talk disturbs your digestion, just let me know. You haven't put his date of departure down. Oh, well, I'm always forgetting that. He left on the 18th last Friday. Uh, caught the 729 back to Paddington. Do you let policemen stay here free of charge? I beg your pardon? There doesn't seem to be a note of his bill here. Oh, well, it should be. Look for yourself. Oh. Ah, yeah, that's strange. It must be in the office somewhere. I'll turn it out for you, if you like. I do like. Do you have to drink all the coffee, Sergeant? Thought you finished. It won't take a minute to make some more. Yes, yeah, see, look, that's all the coffee. We haven't time, thanks, and we mustn't delay you. I expect you're anxious to start looking for that bill. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, of course, well, is it, Sergeant? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, they certainly don't stint the food down here, do they? I won't offer you the remains of mine. I'd like to keep you with me a little longer. You know, I can only think of one reason why Ridley would make a booking in a false name. Huh? What's that, sir? Because he knew that if he used his real name, Manning wouldn't accept his booking. I have to find out if Manning's got a pretty wife. Well, come on. Let's make a move. Constable Hart's calling for us at ten to take us to the murder cottage. But before that, I want to have a look at the churchyard where the victims are buried. We might as well see for ourselves what Ridley found so fascinating. <sighs> Over here, Inspector. Yeah. I found it. Oh, yes. In loving memory of William Arthur Johnson, aged 27, and his wife, Mary Jane Johnson, aged 39. Mm. She was a bit older than he was, sir. Mm, so it would appear. Graves well looked after. Someone's taken a lot of trouble. What flowers are they? I'm no gardener, sir. If you can't eat it, you don't want to know, eh? Well, it doesn't look as if the grave's going to yield up its secrets to us. Let's hope the murder cottage will be more forthcoming. Now, mind how you go, Inspector. Don't want you falling in another ditch, do we? A good pair of trousers ruined and that fat old cackling his head off. I hate that country. All stinging nettles and incontinent cows. How much further? Not far now. You've been saying that for miles. Were you here at the time of the murders, Constable? I was, sir. I hope I never have to see a sight like it again. Mm. Hold very still, sir. What is it? Don't move. The snake? No. Just follow my finger where I'm pointing. What is it? A heron, sir. Oh. You won't see any of them in town now, will you? I haven't come here to look at damn birds, Constable. Oh, sorry, sir. It's my hobby. You shouldn't have time for hobbies. Come on, Greedy. Oh. Hey. Oh. Do you see that dirty great bird? Surely you've seen a heron before. Imagine that on a plate with roast potatoes. Yeah. Ah. Don't tell me we're here, Art. Yes, sir. That's it. That's Ivy Cottage. Ooh. Creepy looking place. Well, the locals won't go near it after dark. Mm. They reckon you can still hear that poor woman screaming. I think it's the wind myself. No romance, that's your trouble. How long's it been empty? Ten years. Ever since the murders. No one wanted it after that. Now, you'd better let me go first, Inspector. Mm. This part's a bit tricky. Don't want you in the metros again, do we, sir? Just lead the way. <sighs> Here we are, then. Mm. <laughs> After you, sir. Mm. Careful. Some of those floorboards are a bit dodgy. Ah. Uh. I should have warned you about that beam, too, Inspector. Very cleverly done, Constable. Had my eyes glued to the floorboards. Watch out for the beam, Sergeant. Oh, thank you, sir. This way. Yeah. The old kitchen. Oh, a bit primitive, isn't it? They cooked on that old range. Gathered wood from the forest for their fuel. We'll take the short tour if you don't mind, Constable. Uh, yes, sir. The husband's body was there. 
Well, you're standing, Sergeant. Hey. And if the floor was clean, I reckon you could still see traces of the blood stains. And that door? Oh, straight through to the back garden, sir. They reckon the murderer came in through there. It was wide open the next morning. What did it open now? Well, it doesn't matter. The wife's body was upstairs, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. In the bedroom. Now, come up, I'll show you. This is it, sir. The bedroom. She was there under the window. You could hardly recognize her. Her face just wasn't there. Shotgun at close quarters. A gun and a knife. Hmm. Why both? It does seem odd, doesn't it? The gun was her husband's. We don't know about the knife. Pretty common type. Where were the murder weapons found? Miles away, sir. Chucked in a ditch by the road just outside Bristol. Mm. Fingerprints? White clean, Sergeant. Well, I suppose Inspector Ridley looked in here again last week? Oh, I imagine so. He never took me into his confidence. No? On their honeymoon, were they? Well, that's right. Rented the cottage for two weeks. Have they been here before? No. Strangers to the district. Anything stolen? Uh, nothing as far as we could see. Hmm. No wonder Ridley was only for ten years. It doesn't make sense. Oh, come on. Let's get back to the hotel. Right, I'll have to wade through that dirty grate pile and try and find something someone's missed. Yeah. We found splashes of blood all over these stairs, sir, from the knife, they reckon. Uh, hey, hey, Inspector. What? Uh, your torch, Constable. The bottom of the stairs here, behind the front door. Good Lord. Keep back. We've got a sample off to the lab for analysis, Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir. It's blood, all right, and not from ten years ago, either. Uh, well... My lamb was all right, sir. It would be. My fish was rotten. Hmm. Chuck the cheese and biscuits over, would you? Huh? So. Oh. Oh, here comes heart. The cheese looks hard and the biscuits are soft. The lab have just phoned about the blood stain, sir. A bit louder, Constable. The bloke in the far corner didn't quite hear you. Oh, sorry, sir. Don't look at me like a whip puppy. Sit down. Oh. Lab report on my fish would have been interesting. Find out how it died and when. Hmm. What do the lab boys in Bristol have to say? Well, I've only jotted down the main points. The full report's coming in the post. It's human blood, all right. About five days old. Five days? Last Friday, the last time Ridley was seen. There hmm. were some hairs and small pieces of skin tissue adhering. From a head wound, they reckon. Back of the head. Here, sir. Hmm. The hairs were dark, almost black. Hmm. Well, but the Ridley had dark hair. Don't let us stop you eating, Sergeant. Anything else, Hart? Uh, the blood group is A.B. Reese's negative. Inspector Ridley's? Oh, must be Ridley's, Vincent. It's a rare group, yet <laughs> half the village saw him boarding his train. No one mentioned the head wound? I was looking forward to that last biscuit, Sergeant. No, oh, don't apologize with your mouth for uh, What about sending some of Inspector Ridley's hair to Bristol for cross-matching, sir? Yes, get on to the yard and arrange it, Sergeant. There must be a hairbrush knocking about his fat. Uh, right you are, sir. Well, I don't think there's much point in waiting for the cross-matching, though. That's Ridley's blood, all right. We go back to the cottage first thing tomorrow, Hart, and give it a thorough going over. I'll be here at... Eight o'clock, sir. That not too early for you? No, you've got to be up at the crack of dawn to get a decent breakfast in this place. Now, eight o'clock then, sir. Good night. Mm. Good night. Mm. Reckon you can move with all that food inside you, Sergeant? Mm. Just about, sir. Good. One last little job for us before we sleep the sleep of the righteous. We're going to take a look at number 12, Ridley's old room. Hmm, shall I get the key from Manning? No, we won't bother him. He must be tired out running his hotel single-handed and... Working out all these delicious meals for us. I'm sure one of my spare keys will rise to the occasion. Curtains. Good. 
So this is the famous number 12. Oh, they've got a cupboard at home that's bigger. Well, it makes it easier to search, sir. You always look on the bright side, Sergeant. Well, you take the doors. I'll do the wardrobe. All right, sir. Has anyone had this room since Ridley left? Not according to Manning's book, although I'm beginning to believe that's a work of fiction. <coughs> well, at least he's not married, sir. That messes up your theory about Ridley using a false name. Ooh. No, nothing. You haven't had my luck, have you, Sergeant? What, you found something, sir? Must have fallen out of his jacket pocket. Hmm. Railway ticket. He's returned half back to London. I just thought that would be the last thing he'd leave behind, wouldn't you? Mm. The very last thing. Mm. Has that duck leaf worked yet, Inspector? No. I told you they were stinging that one. Only after I'd fallen in and found out for myself. Yeah. Oh, come on, open up. <sighs> You both know what to do. Short of tearing the place apart, we give this cottage the most thorough search possible. Uh, right, sir. Somewhere there must be a connection between the murders ten years ago and the disappearance of Inspector Ridley last week. How much longer are you going to be up there, Hart? Coming down, sir. Uh. Oh, no look, I'm afraid. How about you? No, we don't seem to be getting anywhere either. Who owns this cottage? Uh, the manager of your hotel, John Manning, sir. Manning? Why the hell haven't you told me before? Oh, it's no secret, sir. I thought you knew. Oh, All right. It's my fault. I should have read right through that file, but after ten years you can imagine what it's like. I'll get down to it tonight for sure. Was it Manning who found the bodies? Oh, no. Young Valerie West, the vicar's daughter. She found them. Rotten thing for a kid to see. A kid? Well, at the time, barely 17 she was. Oh, mind you, she looked older. And how did a 17-year-old girl get involved? Well, she brought their milk across. The milkman doesn't deliver to the cottage, you know, proper roads, you see, so he left their milk at the vicarage. Now, as they didn't call to collect it, young Valerie took it over for them. The back door was open, so she went into the kitchen and found the husband. How far is the vicarage from here? Oh, just over the rise. If we'd have kept on instead of turning off at the cottage, we'd have come to it. I suppose it's too much to hope that she's still at the vicarage. I thought the idea of a bit of skirt would bring you out of your trance, Sergeant. Oh, she's still there, Sergeant. Mm. Seventeen then. Twenty-seven now. She isn't married or anything? No, no. She's not had much of a life, you see. Her mother died ten years ago. Mm. A poor brother's been in hospital since he was 12. And on top of that, she's had to look after her father, the old vicar. And he hasn't been too well lately, by all accounts. Not been much fun for a young girl. Yeah. The killings took place at night, didn't they? That's right. Between 11 o'clock and midnight, according to the doctor. Mm. So it had been pretty dark in the woods around that time. Black as pitch. Mm. You'd have to know the woods like the back of your hand to find a cottage. So the murderer must have been a local. A stranger couldn't have found his way in the dark. Did Ridley call on the vicar's daughter last week? Well, like I said, sir, it wasn't his custom to confide in me. He could have done. We'll soon find out. What did the villagers think of Ridley? Oh, you won't find anyone who liked him. Well, why was that? Did he uh, miss about with any of the women? Well, not to my knowledge. What then? Uh, I, I don't know. He, his manner, perhaps, he was inclined to be... A bit overbearing. Just over the rise, you say, the vicarage? A five minutes walk. Over ditch and steam, nettle. Come on, Sergeant, up on your fat legs. Oh. We're going to pay a call at the vicarage. So everyone, watch their language. <sighs> oh. Uh, no, please, don't get up. No. I'm sorry to have kept you, but... Been so much to do with my father. How is the vicar, miss? Oh, I thought you knew last night. Oh, dear. I am sorry. I, I knew he was ill, but... Well, we come at the wrong time, Miss West. We won't bother you now. Come on, Green. Uh, no, please. I'd like to help you if I can. That's very nice of you, miss. I'm Detective Inspector Sadler, and this is... Sergeant Green. How do you do, miss? Yes. You've um, probably heard that Inspector Ridley is missing. 
Yes, I did hear that. Did he call on you last week? He calls every year, in the cottage, the graveyard, and me. What did you talk about? He just asked me if I'd remembered anything more about the murders. Same questions every year. And had you? No. How well do you remember that morning now? As if it had happened yesterday. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, they, uh, they haven't been over for their milk. It was left here, you see. Yes, we know about that. Oh. Well, I took it across. It was a beautiful day. Blue skies, early morning sunshine. And the back door of the cottage was wide open, and I called out, but there was no answer. So I took the milk into the kitchen, and... Well, he was there on the floor. You needn't describe the body, miss. We know how it must have looked. You found him. Uh, what did you do next? I looked in the other rooms. You... Why did you do that? But to find his wife. I mean, he was dead, but she might still have been alive. I'd like to think that I'd have acted as well in the circumstances. Uh, anyway, then you... Uh... Well, I went upstairs to the bedroom. She was there. The sun was shining through the window on her face. And when I saw her face... Yes, yeah, quite, quite. Um, what then? I, I think I screamed, and then I ran. When I got back here, I phoned Constable Hart. Did you have any reason to believe they'd made any enemies? No. I, I barely exchanged more than a few words with them unless they were on their honeymoon. <laughs> but they seemed happy. Oh, yes, very happy. Well, thank you very much, miss. That was, that was most helpful. Sergeant? Yes, uh, sir. Oh, um, just one more thing. Did you like Inspector Ridley? I hated him. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. It was it was just his... His manner? Uh, yes. A pretty widely shared opinion. N no, uh, don't bother to come to the door. We'll, we'll find our own way out. Thank you. You're very quiet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm trying something new. I'm thinking. Mm. Nice girl, sir. Yes. Did you notice anything funny about her story? Well, I can't say that I did. No. Too busy watching her bosom heave. Mm. Mm. Suppose you were a girl of 17, a fat little girl of 17 in your case. <laughs> you go into an empty house all alone and find a body using blood all over the kitchen floor. What do you do? Whew. I'd run like hell. As fast as your fat little legs would carry her, precisely. But our Valerie just... Presses on upstairs to seek out more bodies for her collection. Didn't that strike you as strange, Constable? Constable? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sir. Uh, you were saying? Just talking to myself. You can carry on looking at your damn birds. There are enough of them. What are they? What? Do you remember a case in Wales, sir, years ago, when they found a missing person's body because buzzards were hovering over it? Vaguely. Well, those birds, sir, are buzzards. Hold it. How do we get there? Oh, we'll, we'll have to cut across by those trees. Come on, then. Oh. 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 It's about here, I reckon. Yes. I can't see anything, no? No. Over here, Inspector. Uh, hello? Farther than I thought. Found anything? No, sir. False alarm. Uh, I'm not so sure. What do you make of this? Somebody's been doing some digging. Mm. It's the right size. Yes, it is, isn't it? Hart? Sir? Will they have such things as spades over the vicarage? I never would. Can you get us a couple without anyone knowing? I'll leave it to me, sir. You don't look too happy, Sergeant. Oh, I didn't know we had buzzards in England. Sir. Every day we learn a little more. Hurry up with those damn spades, huh? There's something here, sir. Show me. Yes. Lift it out. 
Watch it for prints. Ooh. Hey, it's a suitcase. A blue suitcase. Just get it out of the way. All right. It only wants two of us. You carry on, Sergeant. Oh, yes, sir. It's locked. Well, I sometimes have the odd spare key. Yeah. This one, I think. Right, first time. Open it up. Oh. All right. Oh, hey. Clothes. Pajamas. Shirt. Sports jacket. Not packed. Just been crammed in. Mm. Inspector. Just a minute, Sergeant. You better come now, sir. I found him, hey? Oh, yes. That's Ridley. Oh, dear. What's that? For the vicar, sir. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten about the vicar. We ought to spare a thought for poor Miss West, left all alone in the world. Well, there's her brother, of course. Yes, you told me. Been in hospital since he was 12. We won't dig any more, Sergeant. We'll leave him until... Hospital? What kind of hospital? Well, actually, sir, it's more in the nature of a private nursing home. What's wrong with him? His brain was damaged when he was born. They reckon it's incurable. You mean he's insane? He's in a private mental home? That's about it, sir. Yes. I have to squeeze every bit of information out of you, don't I? Every little bit. What's the name of the place? The Restley Private Sanatorium, just outside Bristol. Right. You stay here. We're going back to the village. we got things to do. Green, let's have the murder squad and the pathologist down here pronto. Right, sir. Uh, there's a phone in the vicarage, sir. No, we'll phone from the village. Oh, very well, sir. And then, Sergeant, I want you to phone Restley Private Sanatorium. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, grab a chair, Green. Right, sir. I should have read through this ages ago. Oh. The murder photo? Yes. Mm. Yes, the wedding photo of the husband and wife. Mm. An oddly matched pair. She's not very attractive, is she? She must have attracted something. She was six months pregnant, according to postmortem. Mm. Hence the marriage, no doubt. Odds on it wasn't a love match. Well, what's the news? Well, I got through to the nursing home. Was I right? Did they let him out last week to visit his dying father? No, sir. No? He hasn't been out for years. His condition is deteriorating and they doubt if he'll ever be allowed out again. I gather he's under permanent restraint. So it wasn't him. Well, to quote my one and only press right up, Sergeant, the police are completely baffled. Well, if I knew what you were trying to prove, sir... The husband I... and wife, no known enemies, brutally and senselessly murdered. No motive that ten years of research has been able to uncover. The work of a local, brutal, senseless... work of a madman? Vicar's son? <laughs> I'm a simple man. I don't look for complications. And when I find we have a madman whose home is within spitting distance of the murder cottage, my inclination is to narrow my list of suspects. Oh, how could he have killed Ridley if he was in a padded cell in Bristol? Hmm. You're assuming that the man who killed Ridley also did the other murders. <laughs> Sergeant! Fat and lazy you may be, but you've earned your keep tonight. <laughs> Thank of you, sir. Of course. You still got the number of the nursing home? Uh, yes, sir. <sighs> We're going to phone them again. Mm. Uh, don't forget your wallet. It's not mine, it's Ridley's, but uh, chuck it over. I'd better go through it, I suppose. Come on, miss, come on. Oh, no. Another 10p, please, Sergeant. Oh, blimey, that's the third, sir. Claim it on expenses. Sure. Don't you know what she's playing at? She's going to the loo. Oh. Oh, hello, miss. No, no, that's quite all right. What? Are you sure? Thank you very much. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Uh, eh? No, no, no. No, we haven't had a drop here. Have you really? Yes, yes. Oh. <coughs> Goodbye. Well, sir. 
He wasn't out last week, Sergeant. He hasn't been out for years. Ten years, to be precise. Ten years? Yes, when his mother was seriously ill. Guess what date? Well, the murders took place on the 17th of July. Snap. Oh, good evening, Mr. Manning. Beautiful day. Uh, oh, <laughs> good evening. Found that bill yet? Uh, I- I'm uh, going to look for it now, sir. The idea? Ah, and here comes our stalwart village constable. They've got all they want from where the body was buried, sir. Good. Did you know Valerie West's brother was home the night of the murders? No, sir. I didn't know that. Ooh, if the eyes and ears of the world didn't know, it must have been a well-kept secret. Now, <laughs> isn't that interesting? Hmm. Cheer up, Sergeant. As a special treat, you can have another look at Miss West's magnificent, um, chest. Hmm. she got a few questions to answer. Shall I come too, sir? No, you can see it any time. Get back to the station and wait for details on Ridley's death, will you? In here, Inspector. No, thank you. Yeah. Sorry to trouble you again, so soon, and I'm sure you've got enough on your mind. Isn't this a beautiful room, Sergeant? Look at those lovely flowers. Hmm. Yes, sir. Same as we saw in the graves. Oh, so they are. Hmm. We're own garden, miss? Yes. Do a lot of digging, do you? Digging? Oh, I only ask because... Hmm. Because we dug up Inspector Ridley's body this afternoon. <laughs> You picked a good spot, you know, miss. We uh, never have found him were it not for the birds. I, I don't know what you're talking about. And you are Vicar's daughter. And perhaps it's only fair to tell you that we know your brother was home that night. What night? We uh, phoned the nursing home, miss. They told us. I see. What do you want to know? What really happened ten years ago, the true version? Well, Mother was very ill. and She wanted to see him, her, her only son. The doctors warned us of the dangers, but she was dying. It could have been the last time. They said we must keep his bedroom door locked. He's um, worse at night, you see. But he seemed so normal, we didn't think it necessary. I woke up at midnight, and Gerald was in my room bending over me. Your brother? Yes. When I uh, saw the knife, I thought he was going to kill me. He was only showing it to me, trying to tell me something. And when I switched on the light and saw the blood, I, I knew. I said, what have you done? And he pointed in the direction of the cottage, and then he cried. It was awful. I took him back to his room and locked the door. A bit late for that, wasn't it? I uh, dressed and went over to the cottage. You know the rest. You brought the gun back here? Yes. I washed it and the knife, then we took Gerald back to the nursing home and I threw them out of the car on the way. Who is we? My father and I. Why didn't you tell the police? Your brother was obviously not responsible for his actions. <gasps> the shock would have killed my mother and she had only a few months left anyway. The doctor in charge of the nursing home was a friend of my father's. Oh, um... I won't get him into trouble, will I? Don't worry about that. Gerald's happy there. And he wouldn't have been happy in Broadmoor. Uh, and they're never going to let him out again. You've wasted a lot of people's time. We hope that after a while all the fuss had died out. But he didn't. Every year for ten years, Inspector Ridley came back as regular as clockwork. Prodding, poking, prying, asking more questions, refusing to let it rest. Yes. And then he found out about your brother. Yes. And because he found out, he was killed. Yes. I think at this stage, miss, I'd better caution you. Expecting anyone? No. It could be arts, and Yes, perhaps a murder caught up some news. Let him in. Yes, right, sir. Valerie. I'll try to stop him, Inspector. Never mind. All right, Manning. What do you want? I'm getting you a solicitor, Valerie. Don't say anything until he comes. What's this got to do with you, Manning? Valerie and I are engaged, Inspector. Ah. That's what it's got to do with me. Engaged. Now the pieces are beginning to click together. I couldn't see how she buried Ridley all on her own. What? Valerie? <laughs> You're mad. Uh, tell your 
You'll say what you just told me, miss. That Ridley found out the truth about your brother last week, so you killed him. You're stupid. I'm oh. warning you, Manning. Ridley didn't find out the truth a week ago. She's already admitted he, he did. He found it out ten years ago. What? He found it out ten years ago. But John, no. Yes, Valerie. If he wants the truth, let him have the lot. You were wonderful, Inspector Ridley, found it out right from the start. But in return for certain favors, he offered to keep his mouth shut. Certain favors? He was a great one for a pretty woman, Inspector. Miss West? Yes. He insisted on that little top room at the hotel, the attic room, remember? Because it was well away from everyone. Valerie could go up and down to him without being seen. Seventeen years old she was when it started. Seventeen. Hmm. Is this true, Miss West? Yes. I told him straight last year that I wasn't having him back in my hotel again. That's why he didn't use his own name. So, who killed him? You or her? It was an accident. I only hit him. He must have cracked his head as he fell. From the beginning. Well, I was on my way to see Valerie last Friday. As I passed the cottage, I... I heard her cry out, and I, I, I dashed in. Ridley was struggling with her. Struggling? What was he trying to do? Pretty obvious, isn't it? I hit him, and he fell. One of these people with a thin skull, I suppose. How was it half the village saw him boarding his train after he was dead and buried? We're a tight little community, Inspector. We like to help each other when we can. No one had much love for Ridley when they knew what he'd been doing to Valerie. You did a good job, Miss. Poor old Ridley gets all the blame. He must have wondered why people were hating him so much. He didn't have to wonder. He knew. Mm -hmm. You've told me two stories of what happened that night, Miss. Neither version is correct. Now, why don't you stop telling your nasty little lies and let's have the truth for a change? You take that back, Sadler. Well, shut up and sit down. She's got you into enough of a mess as it is. Blackmailing you for ten years, Miss West. What a laugh. He could get any woman he wanted. He didn't have to resort to that. He didn't find out about your brother ten years ago. He found out last week by phoning the nursing home, the same as I did. So, to protect your brother, you had to tell him the truth. To protect her brother? That's the only thing to her credit, Manning. The state the poor devil's in now, it wouldn't matter to him one way or the other. But she tried. That was the argument you thought you saw, Manning. Your brother never killed anyone, miss. He wandered over to the cottage and found the bodies. That I'm fully prepared to believe. But they were dead when he got there. What? This case is all wrong. Guns and knives. Murderers don't usually mix their weapons. If you hadn't taken the knife and the gun away, Miss West, we'd have sold it like that. Even without the suicide note. What suicide note? <laughs> they had to get married. The wife was pregnant. Whether they'd ever have made a go of it, I don't know. She was very plain and some 12 years older than the husband. When she caught him messing about with another woman, she went for him with a carving knife. And she went upstairs, took his gun and shot herself. It's a classic pattern. Happens time and again. So I said if Miss West hadn't taken the weapons away, we'd have recognized it for what it was, even without this. What, what is it? Miss West knows what it is, don't you miss? I... It was in Inspector Ridley's wallet. Where was it when you found it, miss? Beside the wife's body? I'll read it to you. No, please. I'm afraid I must. I killed him. I caught him with the vicar's daughter. They laughed at me. I loved him. I have nothing to live for now. I'm sorry, Mary Johnson. Oh, I don't know about you, but I find it very moving. So short, yet what a lot it tells us. I caught him with the vicar's daughter. They laughed at me. You like men, don't you, miss? And you don't see many here in the vicarage. And this nice young chap comes along and rents the cottage. Who cares if he's on his honeymoon? Should be easy to get him away from that fat lump of a wife. What a pity she had to go and spoil it all. But... 
But if Ridley didn't find all this out until last week, how's how's he been able to force Valerie to go with him all these years? <laughs> oh, another of her lies, I'm afraid. Ridley didn't need to force any woman to do anything. He wouldn't turn his nose up at anything that was offered, and I imagine it was offered pretty freely. It must have given you quite a kick, Miss, to go to bed with Ridley in that hotel owned by your boyfriend, and getting sympathy because you were forced to do it. I bet the 17th of July couldn't come round quick enough for you. It isn't true, Valerie, is it? I think that answers your question, Mr. Manning. So, she's held back a suicide note, Inspector. So, she's told a few lies, but huh, what harm is there in that? Stay with Mr. Manning and Miss West, Sergeant. I'll send a car up as soon as I can. Yes, sir. What harm, you say, Mr. Manning? Just a few lies? Would you have hit Inspector Ridley so hard if you'd been told the truth? See you later, Green. The sooner we get this over, the sooner we can go home. In The Tenth Anniversary by R.D. Wingfield, Peter Pratt played Detective Inspector Sadler and John Rye, Detective Sergeant Green.